Okay, hi there, Perfecto De Caster here and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. So in this episode of Perf Talk, we have a very special guest, the incredible Thomas Blug. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having well, me. Well, th yeah. I'm glad that we were able to fit this visit uh, during your time after NAM. After NAM, yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah. yeah. Well, it's great to be here because, uh, you know, making all this long trip from Germany yeah. with taking all the jet lag and stuff like this, <laughs> it makes it... Yeah, it's it's good to have more than just a show. Right, and visiting people like you—that's oh. that, that's killer. Thank you, thank yeah. you. So, um, I've I've known of Thomas for a long time now. Who, who oh, hasn't? <laughs> <laughs> who hasn't? It's incredible playing and uh, all the and the incredible um, blue guitar, uh, pedal amps, and uh, the upcoming. Amp X, X, which we will take a look at uh, in a little bit. However, um, even in my years of going to NAMM, uh, I, I finally had the pleasure of jamming with Thomas uh, during the second second day, second day, no, third day. Third day, Friday, is, wait, wait, wait. No, no, Friday, first, Saturday, Sunday, so. Saturday afternoon, I think. Second day then. Think second was, day. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's all a blur. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all a blur and we had, yeah. we had a really fun time. <clears throat> right. And it's one of those things where um, uh, you just jump into the moment and not even worry about cameras rolling and all that. It, it was so fun. So, um, and I will roll a clip Quick clip so that you can guys you guys can check it out. Uh, that was taken by our uh, very good friend Rich here, mm -hmm. who was who was all, who was also there, and uh, he Rich Morgan. There you go, Rich Morgan. Hello. <laughs> and uh, he had the uh, he had the presence of mind to uh, whip out his phone and, and record a little bit of that that special jam. <laughs> so here it is. Uh, enjoy. <laughs> Thomas, um, yeah. uh, I don't know where to start. I have <laughs> I have a lot of stuff to ask you. I noticed that when we were we were playing, it was it was like um, we had a lot of the same vocabulary, but then at the same time we have very very different approaches. Fair enough, yeah. because it's always great to well to have your own style in a way. Right. I, th I think that that's so important that not everybody uses the same vocabulary in the same way right you know i mean we all share the same words but we all have our own message right and so you know human beings uh, your life background is maybe different from mine your experience is different my influence are slightly different and you know uh, with the same words we can tell different stories right and right. still you know come together in a way talk with each other, synchronized music is the best language ever. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> I mean, um, we were able to come together and I, I'm from Asia and you're from Germany and, and we we're, were just, you know... It was melting. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So, I may have to ask you to go way, way back. Like, okay. how, um, how did you come to pick up our instrument? Like, what the guitar. Made you play? Yeah, what yeah. made you play? Well, I always was a fan of guitar players. When I was a kid, my father was at university and um, he picked me up after school and then I got uh, to the cantina at the university, he has some food, sun, and then um, he put me somewhere to make my homework and then afterwards he would kind of visit some students okay. and they had like big record collections oh. and of course from like a decade ago so when I was a teenager or nine ten years old um, I was listening 
uh, to music from the 60s because you know, my father was teaching uh, at school and he, he had uh, people that were kind of into the Rolling Stones and B.B. King and Albert King, the Kings. And um, so I spent a lot of time listening to those records. Wow. And, um, you know, he, my father was busy talking with them and working with them and whatnot, you know, different world. And I had kind of time to kill, but I got fascinated about the music and especially the music from like one of the people that I found, the guitar players. So the guitar f was fascinating me. I was a, a huge Rolling Stones fan, even without knowing how to play a chord or anything. So it's just from, from, from listening to it. So that was my first big connection with music, being a listener. Okay. And then blues rock was the thing, to be honest. And then um, at age, I think it was 11, I started with the electronics because at university there was a man that was repairing the technician was re uh, repairing the gear like video studio gear and audio gear where they had kind of studios they were filming them themselves for psychology mm -hmm. studies like talking to each other okay it's like um how to improve that i wasn't interested in that i was more about you know all the wires and the guy <laughs> the technician was a cool guy so i ended up at his uh, workshop and he, you know, he took me around in the university buildings and showed me all the technology. And then, you know, after a while, he showed me how to solder uh, little circuits. And I, I've done power supplies. And then, being a listener, my first thing was I was building like my own home stereo. Okay. You know, and then and then was ma manufacturing my own my own Bose copy hi-fi speakers, right. affordable. And then when, once I had that, uh, I had like two years up to the age of maybe 13. And then I had, you know, I had one very magic moment touching a guitar. Okay. And this was like, ah, now I, I can do the stuff that I like to hear. Ah, okay. And then the next level was, okay, I got that guitar as a birthday present, you know, my parents noticed that there is something, so they gave me for a birthday present a guitar, and it was a nylon string acoustic guitar. Not so cool for a guy that l loves to listen to <laughs> Eric Clapton yeah, and yeah. the blues players. Yeah. So in that case... You can't bend the strings. <laughs> yeah. I bought myself a pickup and electrified the nylon string guitar <laughs> and built my fast pedal, but this was all a mess. Okay, and then I found out, okay, I need an electric guitar. So I bought, uh, I think, an Aria, uh, Aria, Aria Pro, yeah. Pro, whatever, two yeah. uh, Stratocaster copy. And then uh, I had an electric guitar and I ba built my first own amplifier, transistor bass with even cards. I just found one the, the other day back home in, in, in Germany. I might have a picture I can send okay. you from my phone. I'll, I'll flash it yeah, on, yeah. The, on the and on I screen. And I found myself 1979 with my signature on it, homemade. Okay. I mean, lousy, but it worked. You yeah, know? yeah. But I already had, a, a, I think, a two or three channel amp. I did myself with sound cards that I could exchange. Oh, wow. You know, like a modular system. <laughs> you know, all tacked up yeah. at the age of 13. Yeah. You know? sounded like shit, but I was yeah. the king, you know? Yeah. And, of course, this was a starting point. And then I found out, I heard that tube amps are cool. And I got a very cheap um, Siemens, a German brand. Yeah. Um, uh, EL84, 10 watts tube amp that was being used in the church. You know, not needed anymore in the late 70s, 80s, because tube amps, you know, right. the churches, uh, they, they were kind of from the 50s and 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I got that kind of 10 watt uh, tube amp, and I played that, and then there was a lot of rumble bass, so I put my Wawa in front of, of it to, to make like a low shelf, right. and then I had a pretty good sound, but at way too much volume. So my sister uh, at home, when I practiced, she was always 
screaming at me, you know, <laughs> because she wanted to do her homework. Right. And I was. And then you're rocking up. You know, queen and everything. <laughs> she was only happy when I played queen. That, ah. Because she was a queen fan. Right. But then I, my first kind of power soap was just facing the, the speaker face down to the carpet. Okay. You know, just to get a bit more quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. this was the first. And then I kind of had my first band at school, you know, next level. And then when I had the band, I found that I should have a better amp. My homemade stuff wasn't good enough. Right. And then I bought myself a Mesa Boogie, which was like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the pinnacle. <laughs> the pinnacle, you know. Yeah. And, and me being like 15 or something like this, uh, you know, going to school, having not much money, I had a simple question, what is the best amplifier? Yeah. You know, if you ask this question, you get the right answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mesa Boogie. <laughs> and I said, okay, who's playing Carlos Santana? Okay, okay. I need one of those. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. Five, six thousand Deutschmarks, and I, I spent six weeks to work in a hotel installing uh, radios with alarm clocks in each room, wow. uh, guest room. So I, I, I kind of made the money on the double deal. I sold uh, the radios <laughs> for my electronic supplies yeah. and installed them all, you know. With, okay. You know, yeah, so the vacuum cleaner and, and cutting. Uh, the, you know the wood install the whole thing side by side bed by bed uh, uh, room for room uh, floor floor wow. uh, six weeks every day I don't know 50 a day and then the next 50 at for six a huge hotel yeah, yeah, yeah and this made me the money to buy my Mesa book <laughs> that's, that's awesome yeah <laughs> that's great yeah so, so this was kind of that level and then I was totally obsessed with the guitar. Uh, I remember being at school, not even being there. Sometimes right. Right. I, I, I once woke up in the morning and just put on my, um, what was it, um, my jacket, drove, took my bike, drove to the, to the school and was still having my uh, what is it? The, the, the sleeping. Um, okay, the pajamas. Pajama. I still was in the pajama, so the whole classroom was laughing at me. <laughs> and then I put my, my jacket back on and was sitting there waiting to go home <laughs> to practice the guitar. Right. So that, that, that thing happened. And then when I came home, you know, I, I, I just were, was practicing. And all I noticed was like six hours later, it's, it, it was dark and I was hungry. And yeah. in between end of school and starting to pick up the guitar and that feeling I was somewhere else I was yeah. totally in my world and I, I know exactly how that feels and yeah if and these were heavy days yeah in a way I you know I had to nothing to care, to care about it was just go with the flow and have fun and and practice for me at that time wasn't even a thing I didn't felt feel like I was practicing I was just yeah. playing yeah you're just spending time with your yeah. instrument you know yeah yeah and and then then um, by age 17 I think I got asked from a friend that knew my band the guy is good blah 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 if I would do session work in the studio okay and then uh, I ended up being uh, in the studio and got hired and I had a Mesa Boogie and I had a, a, a decent tone, I knew how to play my time and my whatever was good enough and maybe I was cheap too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a car right. so they had to pick me up and then I, I, I ended up being a session player by recommendation and an accident you know yeah. you do one job and then they ask you again yeah you know, we ask you back and then yeah. word, word of mouth spreads yeah so this is how how I stumbled into the guitar playing oh that's that's amazing yeah. although a, a lot of people don't really realize how much like you need that level of dedication to yeah. get to get to the to the this level of playing too yeah. I mean it's not just you know, oh, maybe I'll pick the guitar up today and no, maybe... No, it will not happen. No. And for me, the point is, if it doesn't feel good, don't torture yourself. Mm. If, if there's a point where it's 
you have to fight with the whole thing, um, maybe then you will not become the maestro or whatever. Right. Um, and for me, everything always was, of course, I did work out certain things, but most of it was almost easy, just fun. Right. I never felt like this was a, a huge struggle. Right, right. And so I wouldn't recommend people to fight with them and be... Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the right attitude. Right. And then th you can hear that in the playing as well. It's if people are like uh, fighting too much. Right, right. I mean, I still like... I, I play a strat because I can dig it deep and have my fun with it, you know? Yeah. But it's, it's still not like... Uh, well, yeah. I, th I think <laughs> it's... Uh, I think it's the forcing yourself that shouldn't be there, yeah. you know, because, I mean, th there will be difficult things, there will be things that, that will challenge you and, of and, 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 and push you, yeah. right? But um, if, if you're really into it and you're not forcing yourself to, to, to practice, to do this stuff, then that goes by really quickly and then suddenly you can play it, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, and, and I noticed that if you want to be faster than Ingrid Malmsteen and have to uh, wear, wear the licks than uh, Holdsworth and, and play the faster, whatever. Y you are never at that level. You can right. do your thing. Yeah. In the end, what, whatever it is, do your thing. Yes. And, and that has a higher value than being the better copy of somebody right. that is almost as good as the original. Right, right, you know? right. And, and also there's there's also going to be somebody faster or more yeah. weird than you. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, there's, no, uh, there's no escaping that. No. And the only way to be whatever people consider better, it is there is no better. Yeah. We are all doing our thing as, right. as we, you know, yeah. you, you're talking about, we use the same vocabulary, but we have different stories or right. different message or different approach. And that makes it interesting to the listener as well. Yes. So if we all use the same words in the same way and do the, tell the same story, it's well, we're, we're all the same people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and it's not it's not interesting that way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's uh, I th I find it very in interesting how how you know a lot of my heroes are inspired by the same by their heroes and then still sound totally different. I mean everybody. In the UK was influenced by Hank Marvin, The Shadows. Yeah. You know, my all my heroes loved Hank Marvin, but uh, Ryan May sounds totally different from Hank Marvin. Right. Uh, and Richie Blackmore, and who not? I mean, they all tried a, a Vox AC30 as, at a certain uh, time in their life, yeah. but then they, they, they went, all sound different. Yeah. And did their own thing and and this is the personality in the end if you're enjoying this video please give it a thumbs up like hit that subscribe button and ring that bell well who was your biggest hero well in the early days it was richie blackmore so um for many reasons his phrasing yeah it's like in the early late 60s early 70s uh i think he was unbelievably good mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if, you know, yeah, ring that neck and there's a, there's so many uh, fast things and, and the way he, he does trills, pull-offs and all that stuff is yeah. amazing. Yes. And, and, and he plays with such conviction too. It's like you, you, it, it, yeah. Every note, it, he means every note. Absolutely. You know? it, it, regardless how fast or how slow. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. da, 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 the, and, yeah. and then he's and, and play, play my most favorite part, the very end. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every yeah. time you hear that, you just gotta. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, that's how bold he is. You know, it's like. Yeah. Yeah, because 
because ty- really. typically like the very end of the solo is is fireworks like ah, whatever yeah. how fast you go mm-hmm. and and it's like one note and and ah, 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 I am going to I, yeah. I'm going to uh, it's like the 200s like, and then yeah, getting to the exit <laughs> yeah, yeah nice yeah. you know exactly yeah and I love yeah. it and and then also here it has a this or The phrasing is yeah. it's not like very clean speed picking yeah. too. Yeah. Like you know, back uh, in the days, it's, it, there, it, it, it's unheard of that around that time. Unless, uh, well, uh, unless you're John McLaughlin. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But, but but in a rock context. In a rock context. No. And and also with this kind of swing phrasing. Mm. To me, the purple like Mark II, the, 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 yeah. Gillen, yeah. Um, Blackmore, um, Lord. Well, had a magic and yeah. Ian Pace. And I had Pace, yeah, yeah. Pace. I had the pleasure to play with Ian Pace, so I, I, I know how it feels. Even if he plays a straight beat, you can it's, feel yeah. there is a shuffle element to it. Right. It, it, and and, I mean, Steve Morse now is a killer guitar player, but he feels too straight. Yeah. Right. Maybe right. He, maybe you agree. Maybe you guys. Agree. No, no, I, I, I do. I mean, um, for me personally, like. Steve Morse is a very like very precise but also killer player. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But but he's very he's he, he plays the sixteen notes like like a country player. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's yeah. maybe his background yeah. and his interpretation of that with this with the new songs that he was involved in, it's a different story. But when I listen to the smoke on the water, I mean everybody can play the riff, even the the, the, the but nobody plays it like Richie. Right. Blah. <laughs> you know, you know, and at the end of the solo, it's right, 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 right. That's that's you know one of my heroes. Then again, like uh, Gary Moore. Gary Moore. Yeah, Gary. Moore. Especially when when I look back at this eighties, um, I mean Gary Moore had different faces. That, yes, there was yes. like yeah, the, yeah, the the big arena rock, and yeah. then and then of course the blues, uh, the blues. Yes, yeah. But, but then the the blues is still like the has has arena rock in him, yeah. Which 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 I really love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he 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 has this kind of Stevie Ray Vaughan approach of high energy blues, mm-hmm. like next generation. Yeah. Uh, but with a really big tone. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> and and of course he plays gain and it's you know some blues guys oh, you have to play uh, yeah, clean yeah. and clean. you know um, it's okay <laughs> but. What's wrong about being there and yeah. celebrating your energy? Right. And it's like, again, that's another player that he means every note. Even if you play 200, right. <laughs> every note has a meaning. It's like... Right. Because I, I remember when I was younger, when I was starting out and I was uh, discovering all of this, I thought when I heard uh, Steve Vai's For the Love of God, it's like, oh, that's the biggest guitar tone ever. And then I heard Still Got the Blues. Oh... <laughs> For the love of God, it's like tiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? and because it is, it is again the way how Gary celebrates the notes. Mm. And um, if you go back to something like Parisian walkways, you know where where he goes like. Uh, yeah, yeah, just squeeze every little bit out of it. You know. Yeah, yeah. And and, yeah. and it's, it, it it makes your face react the same way. It's like ah yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah and, uh, but I I mean I can feel it you yeah. know when when I put a Gary Moore record on it's like there is this emotion and it's like you know no prisoners it's right, like right 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 <laughs> I'm here yeah, yeah. and he plays his ass off and like it's no tomorrow tomorrow and that's what I like about him and 
in a way, Richie Blackmore of uh, Blackmore is more actually he is kind of aggressive, but it in a, in the in in an elegant way. Yes, even, yes. He's, you know? he's a little more reserved. Mm. It's not. Yeah. It's, uh, he's he's not, not as in your face. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. Well, but it, in a way, he also had. A, and this was the stuff that impressed me as a teenager a lot. Now I, you know, I, I like, like also different colors. Like right. you know, people like Eric Johnson. They have smoother personalities, very soft. When they talk, you can hear their personality. Yes, yes. And this is also the way they play. Yes. I mean, it's like if if you would put Gary next to Eric Johnson, it would be like somebody kills the other one. It's like two dogs, <laughs> and one is is clear. You right, know? right, right, right. <laughs> Not saying that Eric Johnson is probably even more beautiful in a way, but the, the amount of energy and, and stage presence. Right. And probably sheer volume would kill. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I noticed that uh, if, I don't know, uh, do you remember the very first G3 tour? Yeah. It was Steve Vai and, and Satriani. And, no, ah. Steve Vai, Satriani and Eric Johnson. Ah, Eric Johnson. The ah, very, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he came later. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Ingve is the, like, the next reincarnation. Yeah. So, in, in that tour, Eric Johnson was the meek little lamb. And, yeah. and, and you have Steve Vai with flamboyant Whoa. and, and yeah. Satriani was in the middle. And then when you... And then when Mal, uh, when Ingve came yeah. joined that tour, yeah. he was the he was the lion. You <laughs> yeah, know? sure. But th this is about you know this is personalities, characters, mm -hmm. and when you grow older, I think even people like Ingve can deal with it. I mean, right. it, you know that you have this kind of I'm an alpha guy, yeah. but hey, you've been there, and then it's it's okay. It, it, you're not a teenager anymore. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't think he lets go though. <laughs> he's still <laughs> maybe, he's still maybe. top dog, I think, in, in his mind. <laughs> Probably he is. Yeah. Okay. I, I met I met some some older, wiser um, heroes that 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 uh, have that uh, energy in in a certain way, right. but are totally aware of that. And and right. that is kind of behind the scenes is like they're so smooth and so cool. Right. Right. But right. when they go on stage, they have this. This I'm, they are yeah. and they turn back to the, to be the animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they are totally cool. I mean, we know it's like yeah, okay, yeah. come on. Well, because the, the, the stage is, well, it's there's something about being really being on primal stage. on stage, stage, you know, because yeah. you're on stage, and you're not looking at you know five hundred little peop, different people or one thousand people. It's one big thing. Yeah. The crowd is one big thing, and you gotta. And you, you got to project yourself so that you don't shrink against that big, big uh, yeah. presence, you yeah. know? And that's an, a, a source of energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I find it very inspiring to, to have that source of energy because you react to them. Yes. And, and it's yeah. sometimes weird. You can have a lot of energy out of a few people that, you know, I played even for huge crowds we opened up for Michael Jackson so we had like 120,000 people <laughs> you know uh, they came for Michael Jackson yeah, yeah, and not for yeah. uh, you know the opening band's guitar player right. I still had my three minute solo where our female singers had to change dresses right, right. so I had 120 uh, I could do the thing nice but um, how it, it, there is something about it I mean if if, if it's that big yeah. It, it's the energy of a huge ship that you push, and, right. and it feels great. <laughs> yes, and and if you don't, uh, and and if you don't project yourself, you just get eaten up. You, exactly, you know. And therefore, that's that's your job mm. to be there and be present. People right. pay for you to be there yes. and be present. Yes. So, of course, you can say th th this guy has too much ego. No, that's your job. No, it, it, yeah, yeah. You, it, it's 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 necessary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna check the time. Perfect. You think about the the whole vintage aspect of it already? I've, you know, I had, I bought after my Aria Pro, I bought a real Fender because of, you want to step up. Yeah. And this must have been somewhere in the 80s. And this was the shittiest Fender ever built. 